right i'm back with the final video of my diuretics series in this one we will be talking about the osmotic diuretics the mechanism of action indications side effects and other clinical pearls check out my other videos on the other classes of diuretics also now before i begin this video i wanted to share a quote i came across earlier and it said rest at the end not the middle now whatever your goal is in life you will eventually get there just stay focused. Don't think about how long it will take because sometimes that can scare you and discourage you. Don't think about building a perfect house. Instead, focus on setting the perfect brick each day and then it will eventually manifest into the perfect house. Anyways, let's begin. Osmotic diuretics primarily inhibit water reabsorption without increasing the loss of electrolytes like we see with the other diuretics. So for example, with loop diuretics, not only do we lose water, we also lose electrolytes like sodium, potassium, chloride, magnesium. Should I keep going? <laughs> but osmotic diuretics are like true water diuretics. And that is why sometimes we call them acroretic diuretics. And your mechanism of action is very straightforward. First, just like all diuretics, you want to identify which part of the renal tubule they work at. The osmotic diuretics mechanism of action takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule, the thin descending portion of the loop of Henle and the collecting duct. If we zoom into these areas, we would see something like this. We have the tubule lumen, which carries the filtrates or urine, the cells that line the tubule and the blood vessel. So the proximal convoluted tubule, the thin portion of the descending loop of Henle, and the collecting duct accounts for the highest percentage of water reabsorption compared to any other parts of the renal tubule. These regions are also highly permeable to water, meaning that water can simply pass through the membranes when it gets to these regions. When a patient receives an osmotic diuretic like mannitol, it gets filtered at the glomerulus into the renal tubule. When it gets to these areas, it prevents water from crossing the highly permeable membranes. It does this so easily without lifting a finger. Literally, you see, osmotic diuretics do not get reabsorbed when they are in the tubules. Because of this, when it gets to these areas, they act like solutes and increase the concentration or the osmolarity in that area. This concentration is higher in the tubule relative to the blood concentration. So therefore, water will not cross over into the cells and blood, but instead it will stay in the tubules and get excreted. Let's learn more about mannitol. Based on its chemical structure, it is classified as a sugar. This is why we see the same effects that mannitol causes in patients with diabetes. In diabetic patients, due to the hyperglycemia, some of the sugar gets filtered in the kidneys. When the sugar gets into the urine, it pulls water from the body into the lumen. And that is why these patients experience polydipsia or excessive thirst. Since it's a sugar, it has a sweet taste, but poorly absorbed in the GI tract. So you will never see it administered orally, only intravenously. Because of this property of mannitol, it is also used as a sweetener in foods for diabetic patients since it provides the sweetness without being absorbed and increasing the blood sugar as much as sucrose. Other important uses of mannitol includes, we use it in patients with an increase in their intracranial pressure when it's administered intravenously, mannitol increases the osmolarity or concentration of the plasma. Since mannitol cannot cross the blood-brain barrier, the increased osmolarity from the mannitol draws water out of the brain into the intravascular space. The water then travels with the mannitol to the kidneys where it gets excreted in the urine. When mannitol is used for increased intraocular pressure, the mechanism is the same as I described for the intracranial pressure. In this case, mannitol will draw out the water from the vitreous humor of the eye and into the intravascular space for excretion. Lastly, mannitol is administered to enhance excretion of toxic materials or drugs that are water soluble. Now, there are multiple adverse effects and precautions that mannitol can cause. 
included masking or worsening dehydration as it causes diuresis, causing or worsening electrolyte abnormalities because of the decrease in free water in the intravascular space, which can impact the concentration or osmolarity of the electrolytes. Next, it can precipitate heart failure and pulmonary edema due to the rapid fluid shifts. And finally, you want to avoid using patients with established anuria due to renal diseases because mannitol can cause significant osmotic injury to the tubules leading to acute tubular necrosis. And that will be all, folks. I hope you learned at least one thing. And if the video met your standards, then show some support by liking it subscribing and leaving your questions and comments below and also follow me on these social media platforms thank you for watching this video and take care